Hey good people of the YouTube, this is Vero Sinai and this is my Brazilian FNFEL or Imbel made Brazilian uh, fell rifle of a metric pattern uh, which was produced in uh, 1968 or so. Uh, we are going to make a short video uh, about how to adjust the gas system uh, or the gas port properly. Uh, just for demonstration purpose I already uh, loosened up the screws uh, from the hand, uh, hand guard. Uh, you don't need to do this of course if you are adjusting the gas system. I just want you to be able to uh, watch uh, more closely and have more details. So let's discard of the hand guards. Okay. Uh, by the way, the gun of course is safety checked and the bolt is locked to the rear. The chamber is uh, clear, empty, everything is safe. And uh, we are pointing uh, downwards the range in a safe direction. Alright, so uh, here is the gas adjustment uh, screw. And this hole here, I'm going to make a close up. Sorry for the shaking, but uh, I'm uh, holding. Uh, the uh, tripod with one hand. This hole is your gas hole. From this hole, with the help of the gas plug, which is this piece here, I'm going to back off a little bit, you are going to vent gas into the gas tube, which in return is going to move your piston, and that is going to cycle the rifle. Okay, everybody knows that. So what we need to do uh, we need to uh, find uh, the least possible gas uh, that the piston is going to eat uh, in order to cycle the rifle, which means uh, we have more gas uh, to speed and accelerate uh, the projectile or the bullet, and that's what we want to do. We have to uh, shoot as uh, fast and with flat uh, trajectory. Uh, more power behind the bullet is going to mean flatter trajectory and faster bullet is more accurate. So, uh, first, you can adjust this color uh, counterclockwise and clockwise. If you are adjusting it counterclockwise, so which means that you are uh, rotating it uh, towards um, the butt of the rifle, you are going to open up this hole. You see? We got a bigger hole now, which means that we are going to bleed off gases, so we are going to waste gas, have less gas uh, for the piston, and the rifle won't cycle properly. Uh, why you want to do that, for instance, uh, what if you just want to uh, launch uh, rifle grenades uh, or such some? You are not going to do that as a civilian, but uh, the rifle is a military rifle, so you could do that. So, as a starter, we are going to open the port as much as possible, so we are going to waste the gases. The rifle is not going to cycle, actually it will uh, have a failure to eject, sometimes even um, the charging handle or the bolt is going to move backwards a little bit and then slam back uh, the empty case into the chamber so you are going to have a uh, failure to eject. Uh, that's perfectly normal, uh, actually that's what we want now. Okay, so let's see what happens. By the way, I have this uh, nice magazine loader here, which was uh, made uh, for the FAL uh, rifles. So you just uh, put it on the top of the magazine and with the NATO standard uh, charger clips holding uh, five round stops you can charge your magazine faster. So in case the risks are coming you can load faster. Except for the fact that uh, with this crappy wolf ammo it doesn't really work as nice and smooth as it should. So well, let's load up around. This is the crappiest ammo on earth, a wolf, steel case. If it's going to cycle this properly, then it will cycle just about anything. Of course, uh, you are going to need more power for uh, cycling uh, a steel case ammo than a uh, brass. We got different ammos uh, here, uh, as well here, uh, but we are going to start with the worst. Alright, let's load up around. So again, the rifle is uh, very likely to not to eject properly, so we are going to have a failure to eject. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, if uh, should your rifle absolutely stop, you cannot miss the ball because uh, uh, an empty case was uh, fed back into the chamber. Do not start using a mallet or a hammer. So do not hammer the charging handle because it will break off. Just put your hand. Let me see if I'm getting it right. So just put your hand onto the charging handle and smash the bottom of the rifle against something padded and hard, but hard like this table with this uh, uh, rag. Like so. And it will start moving. So, the rifle did not eject. Actually, I'm uh, trying to demonstrate a uh, really worst case scenario when the rifle actually is going to okay uh, jam. I have rotated uh, the gas plug even farther. So, like for disassembling the gas uh, uh, adjustment screw, I rotated even farther. So now the rifle won't have a single shred of gas for operating the piston. Left. So we got no gas for the piston. Okay, let's crack on that round. So the rifle didn't uh, eject again. The magazine is empty. And it's stuck. Oh, it's coming out. Okay, never mind. So, now let's start adjusting the screw toward uh, the muzzle. So we are, we are going to uh, cut off some of this uh, uh, hole here. Again, just let me get the camera a little bit better, okay? So we are going to close off this uh, hole. How you do that is you are rotating this uh, adjustment screw towards the muzzle. Let's close it up like that. I would say we have closed it uh, with uh, 5 clicks. You got uh, 14 clicks of total adjustment, so we, with 5 clicks we are uh, at the uh, third way. Okay, let's see what happens now. So the rifle didn't eject yet, but almost. I felt uh, the piston a little bit moving. So we need to close off even more, I guess. So let's have three more clicks. One, two, three. Okay. Let's see what happens now. My guesstimation is that uh, it should eject. Yes, it did, indeed. There is the case. Right there. So it ejected a good two yards uh, to the right and uh, something like a, f a foot or so uh, in front. So that, that's perfectly right with the steel case demo. I believe uh, we can uh, adjust uh, the port one click backwards because this is too much gas. Uh, remember, if it's uh, throwing uh, steel case demo 
uh, out like that, it will uh, uh, actually launch into orbit a brass case demo. So it's too much gas. You don't need that much. stuck now. It did not eject. So we actually do need that much gas. I was wrong. So I'm going to show you how to eject from a stuck, stuck uh, FAL. So again, put your hand on the charging handle and uh, smack it against uh, the table. Do not hammer the charging handle, not even with the rubber mallet, because it will break off. That's all. Okay, so we have adjusted the gas port again. So let's see if it will eject this time. estimation is that it is going to fly into the garden of the neighbor almost. Of course it's a shooting ring so nobody will complain. Okay, so that's all. We got a perfectly working rifle now. I'm going to make uh, another short video about uh, disassembling the gas port. Actually, why not do this now? So the gun is safety checked. So we are going to uh, show how to uh, take off uh, the FNFAS gas tube. So first of all, we will have to get this collar out of the way. Sometimes need our gas adjustment screw, a little persuasion, but it's nothing serious. This spring might be a little bit tricky to compress, but Mine is actually quite loose, so, okay, we need to, all right, get this absolutely out of the way, okay, perfect. Now you will see that there is There is a little pin there, right there, here. This pin must be removed before you try to unscrew the gas tube, otherwise you're going to uh, destroy its uh, threads and uh, you're pretty much gas screwed or gas screwless in uh, that uh, sense. Okay, so let's uh, punch out that little pin. Let's put that aside. Now you can actually unscrew your gas tube. And why we did that is that uh, first of all you can see that here are, this is the part where the pin is going to go in. So that's why, first of all, you need to remove that pin. And you can take out uh, the color, you can actually uh, clean it, whatever you want to. But basically, this is uh, removing the gas tube. It's very simple and it's very easy. 
and that's all you need to do. Uh, I cannot remove this end uh, of the screw because uh, on mine it's absolutely stuck. I could heat it up, but it's uh, no big deal. So to reassemble is opposite in the reverse order. You need to thread it in as much as it goes in, and then when it's completely in. You just give it a little movement towards the back. I don't know if you can tell, but this close is off if you screw it absolutely to the end, so it won't have any gases. And then you need to open it up, perhaps from another angle. <laughs> 